Mr. Bhagat, uh, Minister, no doubt you recognise the exceptional contribution to society uh, of the workers in the rural social scheme. And I think it's important that we remember this is not an activation scheme. This is a supplemental income scheme uh, in return for work done for small, low-income farmers and fisher people. Could the Minister outline the reasons that the Department have put a cap of six years on the length of participation on this scheme? Previously, as long as you were eligible under the income threshold, you, you could stay on the scheme indefinitely because you would need the supplemental income indefinitely and society needed the Thank work indefinitely. Thanks, Chair. So the Rural Social Scheme is an income support initiative to provide part-time employment opportunities in the community and voluntary organisations for farmers or fishermen in receive of certain social welfare payments and underemployed in their primary occupation of either farming or fishing. Communities benefit enormously from the skills and the talents of our local farmers and fishermen, and the participants have the opportunity to improve their existing skills or indeed share develop new skills while performing this valuable work in their communities. But unfortunately, as the deputy knows, um, the scheme has its limitations. Uh, apart from the fact that it's played an important and enormous role in sustaining rural communities, the participants do have the opportunity to improve themselves and so therefore make themselves ready for other employment opportunities. Um, in tandem, communities benefit obviously from their skills and their local uh, talents. Uh, and I, actually, indeed, many of the projects up and down the country have actually been performed by RSS participants. There's a beautiful church in Roscommon that has been um, reorganised and rebuilt and it's looking absolutely fabulous. But we've, in the last number of years, I've secured extra resources to add extra places in 2018 and 2017 to add places to the RSS scheme. But the problem is, is that if we leave people on it indefinitely, it locks other people out and it doesn't allow them to actually take um, any participant, pr participation in the scheme. So scheme participants who commenced on the scheme prior to the 1st of Sef uh, February 2017 can remain on the scheme. Um, so anybody that probably uh, would have engaged and participated in the scheme when you had introduced it, Deputy, uh, will be allowed to remain on it for as long or as indefinitely as they want to. But in order not to lock people out, because as you're well aware, it's one of the probably highest rated participation of any of our schemes, um, and because we do have a cap of the places, we introduced a six-year um, participation limit uh, for people to come in, stay on the scheme, reskill and redevelop it and make themselves available for other employment Thank opportunities you very in the much. community. Deputy. Can you tell me at the moment the number of places available on the scheme, the number of participants on the scheme, and the number of people on waiting lists throughout the country to go on the scheme? Because we know there's a very finite number of people uh, in receipt of either farm assist or fish assist. And therefore, Minister, it would appear to me that this is actually a false reason because to make the, the, the places available on demand would require a very, very small increase. So can you give me those figures? The number on the scheme, the number waiting to go on the scheme, and the number of places that you've approved for the scheme. Thank you, Deputy. Minister. I might be able to answer all of your questions, but as of the 29th of November last week, um, there are some 3,231 participants uh, and 138 supervisors in our RSS scheme. The level of funding allocated to the scheme for this year is 53.11 million. Um, you are right, it is and was originally established as an income support scheme, but because of the way the scheme is developed, the way training is involved and people can reskill and redevelop um, the talents that they come to us with and enhance them, it allows people and affords them the opportunity to be able to go and look for new work opportunities in their communities and their environment. And I think um, if we were to continue along the guise as it was originally established, an RSS participant could spend their entire working life um, on the scheme, first of all resulting in very limited turnover of the places, but literally no opportunity for new entrants. And I don't think that's what was ever envisaged, and it certainly isn't what's envisaged going forward. And whilst it mightn't be a pure activation scheme insofar as some of our other schemes are, the aim of the people uh, on the scheme isn't to get a job at the end of it, but it very much Thank is you. to help them skill up, retrain um, whilst they're offering their valuable services in the community so that they can have a broader uh, approach to maybe looking for work thereafter. Final comment, Deputy O'Keefe. Minister, I hear the skill up. Remember, these are active farmers. They are highly skilled people. 
And that was one thing that amazed me when I went to live and work permanently in rural Ireland, was the level of skill of local farmers in so many facets of work. But for some of them, but also the family reasons, the combination of the scheme providing absolutely vital services at a very, very small cost to the state, that were otherwise you would have to pay a lot more money to provide, and the farming keeps them fully occupied, and they're not available to go and take full-time positions. So I think it's patronising to talk all the time as if these people were in some way underskilled. Minister, if people want to progress into full-time jobs, they will. If they can get them, and if they are free to take them, they'll take them. Minister, can you answer the question? You said that there are 3,231 participants. What's the ceiling or the total number of places available on the scheme at the moment? And secondly, you're, when you look at this at the micro level, there are some areas in the country that have availability of places on the scheme, but because of the six-year rule, when it does clip in, they will not Thank be you. able to fill the places. Minister. Thanks, Chair. So when I made the increase in 2018 budget, um, it capped the available places at 3,350. Uh, I've just told you two seconds ago that the participations at the moment are 3,231. And so we, like, this is one of our most successful schemes. Um, and far from being patronising with respect to your deputy, what I'm trying to say to you is, is that some of these people are the highest skilled workers that we have in our community. But they're also only part-time farming and part-time fishing. And so therefore it is open to them to have another part-time job outside and above the state providing an income support for them. And so absolutely no way was it ever intended to have people dependent for the rest of their life on welfare. I don't think that was ever envisaged by anybody, and it's certainly not envisaged by the scheme right now. And that's why the cap of six years was put on it, so that people could come in and dip in and dip out at different periods of their life that they couldn't avail of other job opportunities that were available in the state. And so far from being patronising, this is a really valuable scheme. I realise that you established it and I take, you know, give you the credit for doing that. It is one of our better schemes. But what we will absolutely do not Thank do you. in the Department of Employment Affairs and Social Protection is create welcome or welfare dependency. That defeats every single purpose that we've got. Okay. Thank you very much indeed.